portability has never been easier in .NET. It used to be that if you wanted to deploy to different operating systems and to be truly portable, you would have to use something like C, C++, or even Java. But .NET's come a long way since it went open source and since it moved from the original framework to the new core framework with the ability now to deploy applications to Linux, Mac, mobile, Windows, of course. We're really spoilt for choice, honestly. In this video, I'm gonna show you how we can build a simple .NET application and then deploy it to different platforms. But also, I'm gonna try and make it so that it's as simple as possible in terms of the deployment. So we're just deploying a single file. That way, you can write something once and then compile it and deploy it to whichever system you're targeting. So this involves some options in Visual Studio or whichever IDE that you're working in. I'm working in JetBrains Rider, but the options I'm gonna to select to do my publishing are identical to Visual Studio. So here I've got a simple console application, the original example, which is just outputting hello world. I'm gonna put a console.read line underneath this so that it keeps it open after the hello world is printed to the screen. And then I'm just gonna run the application so that we can see what the output is as we expect hello world so whenever we build our application it's going to build in either debug or release mode so if we're talking about deployment we're going to want to build our application in release mode now on its own if you did this if you just clicked you know build solution then it's going to build it in debug so it's going to end up having lots of extra stuff that you don't necessarily need when you're in a production environment there's things that, that are there to optimize debugging, to make it so that it's possible, or easier at least, to do things like breakpointing. If you actually set it to release, so in Visual Studio, it's actually simpler to find this. It's at the top of the screen uh, where you can see debug, you can hit the drop down and go for release. But if I change it to release here and then rebuild it, and then I go to my uh, application in the file system. So as you can see, I'm in Linux. Um, but by default, it should be building a Windows application. And as you can see here, this is what is generated in the release folder. Now, if we wanted to deploy this to a Windows machine, because it's it's built for Windows as default, it won't run on this machine, then I could. I could just take all of these files, put them into a folder, and then drop them onto a machine. What if I wanted to make it so that it was just one handy application that I could move, one executable? So if you right-click your project, again, the same in Visual Studio, and go down to publish, you'll get the option to publish this application to a folder, which is what you want to do essentially. Now, because this is a .NET option, again, this will be the same as you would see it in Visual Studio or any other IDEs that you're using. And in Rider, it's no different. Uh, we've got the target location, we've got the configuration. So I talked about de debug or release. You've got your target framework. Now for me, I just have .NET 8 on this Linux machine. And these are the things you want to look at, the deployment mode and the target runtime. So I'm gonna talk about deployment mode first. So obviously we are writing our console app in .NET and so it needs the .NET runtime to be able to run it. Uh, now you've got a choice. You can either deploy the application to a system which already has .NET installed uh, but you've got to be sure that it's the same .NET version and that it actually is installed. And that would be a framework dependent deployment mode. The benefit of this is it could be a little bit of a lower footprint because you're not bundling in the runtime. You're just saying, here's an application. It uses this version of .NET runtime. Off you go. Assuming that that's on the machine that you're deploying to, you're all good. But what if it isn't? And this is often the case. You might be releasing an application where you don't necessarily have control over the local environment. And you just want to be able to be sure that it runs regardless of where it is. For that, we can use a self-contained deployment mode. Self-contained will actually bundle in the .NET runtime with the application. Now, as you can imagine, this obviously means larger footprint in terms of file size. But in most situations, I think it's worth it because you can just say, well, here's everything that it needs to run. I can just drop that on the machine and away we go. Target runtime will be the target environment. So by default, we've got Windows X64. So this will be 64-bit Windows systems. You've got a choice of lots of different architectures. You've got Windows X86, you've got Windows ARM, ARM64, 
OS X for Mac, you've got Linux, and you've got Linux ARM as well. So we can deploy this same application to lots of different runtimes, most notably Windows, Linux, or Mac. So by default, for most of you watching, I think it's safe to assume you would um, just use the default Windows runtime if you wanted to just publish this to your local machine, because the majority of you are probably running Windows, I don't know. Me, obviously, I, you can see I'm running Linux. So if I wanted to run this on this machine, I would choose my Linux version. It will just be plain old Linux x64. And then in terms of what we talked about with a single file, that will be the ability to just drop this executable somewhere on its own. Then we can click produce single file. And again, that will be the same in Visual Studio, whichever other IDE you're using, you should have that option if your IDE supports .NET. So I can click apply here and then I can click run and it will go and package up the application with those settings and drop it into the location I specified. So back in my file system, if I go back up to the bin, it won't actually be in the same place it was when we were just building the application. Before it was in the release folder at that top level within .NET 8. Actually now what we've got is a Linux x64 folder and then inside here, you can see there's a whole bunch of files. Uh, at first you might think, well, you know, I, I wanted just one file. Well, actually, there is a publish folder inside here as well. So if we go to that, and you can see, yes, there are two files, but you shouldn't need this file. You should just be able to drop this file somewhere and have it run. So if I copy this and move it to, say, my documents folder, we can try and run it from here on its own. So I've just dropped it into my home documents. So if I want to run this on this machine, with it being a console app, I'm going to run it from the terminal. I'm going to just change directory to documents. As you can see, if I list those out in here, you can see I've got my files as I'd see them in this window. Console app 2 is the application. So if I just say console app 2, there you go, hello world. Uh, and then if I have a console read line on there as well, so if I just press that, then you can see we've actually exited the application there as well. So that's just ran on a Linux machine with one file. I could do the same thing on a Windows machine, on the Mac even. So all I would need to do is go back into the application. If I wanted to deploy this to a Mac, for example, then I could go back into publish dialog for this application. I could go to create new, so local folder, and then just do the same thing again. I'd say it's a self-contained application. It's going to um, Mac OS X, so OS X 64, produce single file and then apply those settings and run. And that's it. That's all you would need to do to take your application and deploy it to lots of different environments. So short and sweet in this video, I hope you found it useful, a little bit lighter on the coding side, but it's really useful and I think important to know how .NET deploys and to really take advantage of the cross-platform functionality that we have in .NET. Also at the time of filming this video, .NET 9 was just released, so happy .NET 9. I hope you're enjoying using it and exploring the new features. I'm sure we'll do lots of videos exploring it in the near future. But until then, thanks for watching.